Okay, and we're back. This time we are reviewing the Leper for the Darkest Dungeon. Um, we're going to go over stuff like his stats, his skills, his uh, camp skills, his trinkets, and his resistances and team comps. And i got to remind myself again to make sure we go over his crit bonus because I keep forgetting to go over people's crit bonus and have to edit it in post. So um, let's switch over to his stats right away to see what they look like. So here are the Leper stats. So here are the leper stats. Um, you can see down here I've extracted the leper's numbers and put them next to the averages of the entire cast. Um, let's just compare to see where he excels and where he doesn't excel. You can see there's a lot of green and a lot of red, so we got a lot to talk about this time. Um, so let's go one by one, right? So his HP is very, very above average. This is 20 points of HP above the average num above the average HP of the cast. He has the highest HP in the game. I really like that. HP is a very, very consistent way to, to mitigate your risk of death. Um, the more HP you have, the better. That's a very good stat to have a lot of. Uh, the, his next stat is Dodge. It's the lowest in the game. It's very below average at 20, and that's okay because we have a huge HP stat. Uh, I'm okay with this huge HP slash low Dodge combination. I really actually like it. It's probably one of the better combinations in the game. Um, so that's a good thing as well. It's it, Well, it's not good. I would love to have more Dodge on Leper as well. But it's certainly not bad. It's not the worst when you have a good HP stat to balance it out. Um, speed, uh, very below average. He is actually the second slowest in the game. And if it weren't for the Crusader being at three speed, um, he would actually be the slowest in the game. The Leper would be, that is. Um, so this is a very, very bad thing. Uh, being slow is very crippling for a lot of reasons. Um, but Leper being a damage dealer and being slow at the same time is very bad. Um, uh, his crit rate also is actually very below average, the lowest in the game as well. Uh, this is also very, very bad for a damage dealer. You obviously want to crit. Crits give you more damage. Um, but when we look at his damage range, which is actually the highest in the game, um, we see that it's okay. We can sacrifice a little bit of crit to get a huge damage range. Um, and he is very notably above average uh, because he is very notably above the second place person. Uh, he is at 13 through 26, while the Abomination, who's the next best, is at 11 to 20. That's a significantly large amount higher. And But the main problem here is that he's not exactly consistent. You can't really predict how much damage he's going to do because his range is so large. He's got 13 to 26 as a range, which means he's got 13 uh, numbers he can hit while the, the other characters in the game have roughly nine numbers he can, they can hit. Um, on average, the Leper will be pretty high, but uh, we'll get when we get to the skills, we'll talk about why this doesn't matter as much and why large damage doesn't actually excite me on the Leper. Um, going through his resists, he's got uh, the highest stun resist in the game at 120. He's got average blight resist, the lowest disease resist in the game. We're talking about Le Leper's very, very extremist. He's either the highest in the game or the lowest in the game for a lot of stats, and that's kind of funny to me, uh, especially when you move over to move resist, which is the highest in the game, and then we move right back to the lowest in the game with bleed resist at 70. Uh, this is a little sad. Um, debuff resist is at 100. That's fine. I don't care about that too much. And trap disarm is at 70. Um, that's okay. Whatever. We have other characters to disarm traps. And he's got a movement of 1 forward and 0 back. So he cannot move back. Whenever you try to move the Leper back, it will not give you the option to. Uh, this is really, really problematic for the Leper as well. Because um, one movement... when The Leper only functions in positions 1 and 2. Um, and so when he gets shuffled to position 4, he needs two full turns of moving forward uh, to get back to a position where he at least functions. And he only really functions optimally in position 1, in my opinion. So. If he gets shuffled into position 4, it takes me 3 turns of moving the Leper forward in order for me to get back into what I believe is the most optimal position for the Leper. This is a very, very bad move spread for the Leper. Um, but let's do a conclusion about his stats. He's very durable. He's got a very strong HP stat. Um, it's a little mitigated by the fact that he has below average bleed resist, so he'll bleed very often. But you'll probably find a lot of the time that you're not losing Lepers like to... Um, death Door and Death Blow. Uh, you should probably not be losing him to Heart Attacks either because he has an amazing skill for uh, reducing his own stress. So you're really not losing Lepers most of the time. They're probably going to stay on your roster for the longest if you were to recruit them on your roster. Um, he's got uh, respectable damage numbers, very uh, the, best the best damage numbers that come with the worst crit. 
So I, I have a little mid, mixed feelings about mm-hmm. this. This is not very exciting to me. Um, and he's got decent other stats, but move is really sad to me. Oh, also his speed is trash. Duh, it, it's very bad for him. Um, but let's move on to his skills. So here we have the leper skills. Um, this is my most optimal layout for him. I believe these four moves are the most optimal for the leper. And we'll talk about why. Um, so the first move is chop. It's a move that's launchable from positions one and two and can hit positions one and two on the opponent's side. Um, it has the lowest accuracy in the game amongst all other damaging moves at 95. Uh, it is the only move to have below that level of below accuracy, uh, that level of lowness in terms of accuracy. Um, 95 is very, very bad of an accuracy. Uh, the leper is very inconsistent with hitting um, enemies uh, because of it, without any help in terms of trinkets and quirks. Um, you can expect the leper to miss a good chunk of the time, and you'll probably be very angry, as you should be, when the leper does miss. Um, it's also got a crit mod of 7%, which, when uh, considering his base crit of 5%, uh, comes out to 12%. Uh, crit, which is between is well, roughly 1 in 9 times you're critting. Uh, roughly 1 in 9 times is not very exciting either, so you shouldn't be expecting him to crit. Uh, he does have big damage numbers, so it doesn't really matter. You're probably going to deal a good amount of damage either way, whether you crit or not. But uh, you shouldn't expect him to stress heal uh, off of this with the crits. Uh, but that's fine, because he has a skill that stress heals himself later. Uh, and we'll get we'll get to Solemnity in a bit. Um, oh, his crit... Okay, since we're mentioning crit, his crit bonus is plus 10 accuracy. And that is very, very important for the Leper, because when he does crit once in a blue moon, whenever he does crit... His next move will not suck. It won't miss as often. Um, when you buff his his accuracy by 105, his main damaging move was his chop. Actually hits at 105 accuracy. And that's normal. That's that's still below average, but it's normal. And we can work with normal, at least. Oh, yeah. But the main problem with chop, the main issue I have with chop, uh, being his main damaging move and him not really running any other damaging moves is that it only hits positions one and two and this is the leper's biggest problem in my opinion um, not being able to interact with positions three and four which are the priority targets is really crippling for any damage dealer in the game um, because there are two portions when we talk about damage dealing there's the ability to do damage like the number that you can the, put on the screen and then there's the ability to project damage, which is where you can put that damage. The leper cannot put the damage, cannot, he, the leper can manage a big number, but he can't put that big number onto units where, which you want to put that big number onto. So chop is actually a very, very bad skill in my opinion, especially when you're only hitting the front two ranks of positions one and two, which tend to have a lot of protection, which when you use chop on a character with protection, when an, on an enemy with protection, you end up dealing regular damage again because protection usually comes in like 15 or 20%. And 15, when we subtract 15 or 20% off of 13 to 26, you get, um, you get somewhere within the 10 to, 10 to, uh, oh, math, math, 10 to, we'll just say like 10 to like 18 range, something, something of that category, um, 10, 10 to 20, 10 to 20 range, something of that category. And that's still above average, but it's not. It's still not to the characters that I want to deal damage to. So you're gonna. The rest of your team is gonna suffer because your leper cannot project damage onto the stress casters in three and four. The leper himself won't suffer because he can heal stress. And I keep I keep mentioning solemnity, but we're gonna get to it, and I'm gonna be really excited because solemnity is actually a good move. Um, his next move though is hue, and it is basically chop, but in AOE form. So you, you this is launchable from positions one and two and hits both positions one and two on the opponent's side. Um, and it doesn't have a crit at all, so it actually has a 5% crit, the Leper's base crit. Um, and it, But it also has a minus 50% damage mod. Minus 50% on the Leper's base damage brings him to 7 through 13, which is below average. So you're a, only slightly below average. So you're, you're putting damage into... You're putting slightly below average damage into the two front characters on the opponent's team. Um, which is still not exciting because you still can't deal with ranks three and four, and it also brings up the 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 inherent problem with AOEs and that you're not focusing people down. You have to focus people down in this game. Like the, an enemy can still do the same harm to you when they're at one HP versus when they're at a hundred percent HP. So 
like, not being able to secure the kill is very, very poor for a lot of these AoE skills. Hue is probably one of the better skills, since it does have such a big number to work off of. But, like, why use Hue when you can use Chop? Uh, Hue, if you're running Hue, you're, you're trying to find a scenario where you're able to lightly finish off someone who's already on low HP and also hit the other character, the other enemy in the other position. And when you're using Hue like that, it's kind of just nice to have on the set rather than actually doing something worthwhile. It's just nice to have Hue in those situations. It's not, it's not doing anything. Uh, let's talk about Purge, his third skill. Purge is, there's a lot to read with Purge, but it's a very good skill. Um, it's got 105 accuracy, which is good. At least it can hit somewhat consistently. Um, it's got minus 40% damage mod, which is bearable. So we're, we're, we're kind of getting the same damage mod we got with Hue. So we're in the range of 7 to 8 to 15, maybe. Um, maybe some of that 10% that, that 10 difference makes a little difference for the, the damage number. So we're getting 8 to 16. So we're actually hitting... The oh, it's launchable from position one and hits position one on the enemy's team. So we're we're launching a, an an attack that deals average damage, which is eight to fifteen and a half. It deals average damage to position one, and it knocks them back three spaces, which means it knocks them all the way back into position four. And this is actually a decently exciting skill because a lot of position one characters they don't have access to their best moves. For example, the cultist brawler instead of using um. Instead of using that bleed skill, I don't remember the name of it off the top of my head. Instead of using that skill, which uh, bleeds you, he uses a skill called Stumbling Scratch, which is a very weak and very low accuracy move. Um, it's basically, using Purge is kind of like fake stunning uh, the position one character uh, for the rest of the fight. And that's really exciting. Purge is actually a very good move. Um, not to mention it also um, has a 4% crit mod. That's decent. 9% 9, 9 crit overall is... No, never mind. That's not decent. I'm not gonna lie. I'm trying to I'm trying to hype up the leper a little bit, but no, that's horrible. Nine percent crit is horrible. Don't expect this to crit. Um, the worst part about purge, though, the only problem I have with it is actually you might think of clearing corpses as very good, but because of what I just said, purge can do in that it can pseudo stun a character for the rest of the fight. Clearing corpses is actually very bad for purge because you don't want to clear corpses that are taking up positions on the enemy team. That character that you banish to rank four stays in rank four. So this move is not actually very exciting when you have to when you there's corpses that you can clear. It's very exciting when there are no corpses for you to clear. This is a decent move to open with. I, I'm not gonna lie, this is and oh, the best part is another good part about the purge is that it also buffs Leper for five accuracy. I love any accuracy on Leper. I really just want him to hit. Like if I'm using him as a damage dealer, I just want him to hit. Thank you, Purge. Revenge. So let's talk about revenge. Um Revenge is a one use uh, is a buff for the leper and it's one use per battle, which means it's permanent for the rest of the battle. So for the rest of the battle, oh, it's launchable from all four positions, so the leper can revenge from any position. Uh, and for the rest of the battle, you get thirty five percent damage plus fifteen accuracy on the leper, plus eleven crit on the leper, but you take minus ten dodge and plus twenty five percent damage taken. So how exciting is this skill? It's very underwhelming to me, and you might be asking me why is it underwhelming. We give the leper so much accuracy. 15 is so much. It brings it brings chop from 95 to 110, and 110 is above average. You always say that, Dara. Well, it also costs you an action to buff his accuracy. It it you means it means you had to spend an action on your first turn to buff his accuracy. When other when other heroes don't have to spend it, that first action buffing their accuracy. And sure, it comes with a damage buff, but let's evaluate how much the damage buff does, right? So Imagine a scenario where you chop four times. So chop having no negative damage mod means you do 100% of your damage. So if you chop four times in a row, you get 400% of your damage mod, uh, of your damage. Out, you output 400% of your damage. Um, let's say you revenge and then you chop three times. So when you revenge on the first turn, you change your damage from 100 to 135, right? So you, every single chop from then on will present to you 135% of your base damage. How good is that? Well, let's see. 135 is what you get for the first chop. Then you double that, you get 270 for your next chop, and then you add another 135% to that, and then you get 405. 405 is 5% more than if you just had chopped four times. So in order to gain any value out of revenge, you have, 
uh, discounting all crits and discounting the accuracy problems of the leper, you have to chop at least three times with after you revenge. What if I just chopped four times? If I chopped four times, I would get that same value, right? And if you chop four times with a leper, chances are the stuff in ranks one and two are probably dead, right? So revenge, all it really does to you is say your fourth chop after you use revenge will be better overall, but the entire time you're using revenge plus these four chops, you're taking 25% more damage. And not only that, you're reducing your dodge. The redu reduction in dodge is not that big of a deal because the leper already starts with one of the worst dodges in the game. So it's okay. We don't. I, I don't expect to dodge with my leper, and that's totally fine. But when you decrease, when you increase the damage the leper takes, you are effectively decreasing his health. And 25% damage taken extra uh, reduces the leper's 63 health to 50 health, effectively. And 50 health means that you're below the men-at-arms in terms of health numbers, which is still very respectable, don't get me wrong. But one of the leper's best redeeming qualities is his high HP stat. And you're taking that away from him to give him mild punching power in, like, four turns later? Horrible skill. Don't use this. Like, really don't use this. His next skill is withstand. It's also a one-use per battle uh, buff mm -hmm. for the leper himself. Um, this is a buff that gives him... Oh, so it's permanent. And it's launchable from positions 1, 2, and 3. And this is a buff that gives him plus 30% plus thirty uh, percent protection and plus 30% to each of the following Blight, Bleed, Debuff, and Move Resist. And it also marks the Leper himself. Um, marking yourself is not very exciting. It doesn't really do anything for uh, uh, redirecting enemy attacks. All it does is make enemies with bonus versus mark targets, uh, moves that benefit off mark targets. It makes them hit harder. And they will focus you. Those are the enemies that will focus you. The, the enemies with moves that benefit off of uh you being marked and that's 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 the exciting part um in that you can then sponge up the damage with protection but how exciting is protection it's not very exciting uh not very exciting especially on a character with one of the high with the highest hp stat in the game you don't need protection on this character you really don't because he you i'm really happy when the leper gets focused because i can i don't care he has such high HP that it doesn't matter that he gets focused. So putting protection on him, like, it doesn't help. This is, just, this is honestly just a waste of a skill. Um, and it's also a waste of a turn. It's a waste of a skill on your action bar, and it's a waste of a turn because you have to set it up to get these bonuses. And sure, uh, Blight and Bleed Resist is very, very nice to have, but we're talking about the Leper here with extreme HP. You're not going to be able. The enemies aren't going to be able to blight or bleed him out because their bleeds and blights don't do enough overall damage to, to get him low. And this is not even counting solemnity, which we're going on to next. Solemnity. Solemnity is a skill that can be launched from positions one and two, and it heals the leper for ten HP. And stress heals leper for seven. Ten HP is a sixth of the leper's HP bar. This is so this is so heavy of a heal. This is literally healing for more than a Vestal could with a single target heal. An unbuffed, an untrinketed Vestal heals for like eight to nine single target, and Slimity heals for ten. This is so powerful for the leper. This is probably one of his best skills because it just does so much healing. It keeps the leper so it keeps leper so healthy, it keeps the leper so low stress that your other characters can kind of forget about the fact that you have a leper on the team. Because he can babysit himself so well um, with this skill. And you you might be getting kind of like my tone here and how I'm trying to guide you toward why the Leper is probably one of the worst characters in the game. I'm just going to... The spoilers, he's one of the worst characters in the game. Um, but we'll get to that when we conclude. Uh, right, so th this is a good skill. You should be spamming this a lot in the in the recovery phase of the fight. Do not end Do not end the recovery phase of the fight by accident with Chop. Do not Chop the front two characters in the recovery phase of the fight. Why would you do that? Do not... Ah, the leper's so bad. Uh, his last skill is Intimidate. And this is also a very powerful skill. Probably not as good as Lemonity, but we'll talk about it. Um, it's launchable from position 1 and can hit position any position on the enemy's team. It's got an accuracy of 115. Best accuracy in the game in terms of damaging moves. Intimidate, I wouldn't really classify as a damaging move, but it does deal damage because it does have a negative 80% damage mod. That damage is irrelevant. Basically, don't really think of this as a damaging move. 
What it is, though, is it is a very good utility move, at least for the leper. Um, uh, so what it does is it subtracts the... It, it, it applies a debuff of negative... Uh, of minus 33 damage to the opponent you use it on. It applies a debuff of negative 5 speed to the opponent you are uh, applying it on. And it can de-stealth or... and bypass stealth. Um, the, the bypass stealth stuff, don't worry about it. The most important part is the minus 5 speed. The minus 5 speed for hallway fights allows and the fact that it can also interact with ranks three and four is so important the minus five part speed part of this allows you to actually interact and hamper the effectiveness of stress casters in the last in in the back ranks and minus five speed is very huge it guarantees essentially that um the the next turn of the the next turn that the stress caster takes they will be going last after all of your damage dealers so that you can potentially kill that stress caster before it gets off an extra stress cast. So that's very, very good. This is a very, very good thing to do with the leper. Um, another portion of it that's decently important, I wouldn't say is as important, is the minus 33% damage. Um, that allows this skill to actually have two niches in the game. Um, there are two bosses in the game that do a lot of uh, damage in one go. And that would be the Swine God. Uh, when Wilbur marks you and he hits um, your marked uh, heroes with his uh, giant axe, uh, his giant cleaver, and the prophet when he hits your heroes with uh, the rubble of rune. Um, if you are able to, when you when you take a leper into those fights and you keep him in rank one the entire time, you just spam intimidate over and over again on either the swine god or the prophet. You end up taking, instead of taking like roughly twenty damage from those hits, you start taking like single digit, maybe like fives, maybe nines. And those are those single-digit damages that you're taking from using Intimidate and spamming that debuff on them. It makes it so easy to handle, and you can heal through that so easily. And this is actually one of the ways to cheese those two fights. Uh, you can you can actually I recommend heavily that you use the Leper in the Profit fights that you do because you can actually destroy all three pews and gain all of that gold while suppressing the Profit with Intimidate. Um, this is a very good skill. Oh, I forgot to mention it also gives Leper plus 4 speed, something that the Leper desperately wants because he is so damn slow. When you add 4 speed to the Leper, you bring him up to 8 speed, and the 8 speed is actually one of the faster speeds in the game. Very good. I, I love this skill. This this skill I would love to open with. Uh, you either open with Purge and Intimidate, and then you Solemnity during the recovery phase, and then you can consider chopping to end the fight. This is his best set. I do, please do not run any of these three other skills. Uh, moving on to his camp skills. Uh, we have Let Down the Mask at a time cost of 1. It heals Leper for 25 stress, and it stresses out all your other companions for 5. This is one of the worst camp skills in the game. I wouldn't even use it even if I had one, one extra camp point. And the reason for that is Solemnity exists, and Solemnity can heal the stress heal the Leper anyway. So Solemnity, using it like 3 times roughly uh, during the recovery phase, will completely will do exactly what let the mask down almost um and without stressing out your other uh allies that and you you almost always cast lemonade a bunch of times during the stall phase anyway because you just don't want to be casting all these other moves so this is not this is not needed don't don't click this uh bloody shroud is a time cost of two and it gives 25 percent to each of the following bleed blight move and debuff resist uh, the only two that matter here are the Bleed and Blight Resist, um, but as I said, with Withstand, the Leper has such a high HP anyway that it doesn't really matter. You don't really want these buffs. Don't click this. Reflection, which is a time cost of 3. Uh, it self uh, stress heals Leper for 20, and buffs the Leper for 10 accuracy and 8 crit. So this is uh, very reminiscent of one of the Bounty Hunter's um, camp skills, which is also buffing for 10 accuracy and 8 crit at a time cost of 2. Instead, the Leper, for some reason, has it at a time cost of 3. And the reason for that is that it also heals 20 stress along the way. But uh, when, I, when I talked about uh, the Let the Mask Down, I talked about why he doesn't need stress heal. And that's the same here. He doesn't need the stress heal, so it's just unnecessarily overcosted for no reason. And that's what really angers me about this uh, skill. Because you basically have to click this every time you go into the camp with the Leper. In order for him to deal any good damage. Uh, because he misses so much, you need accuracy on him. And this is one of the easier ways to get accuracy on him. Um, and it just costs 3. And I really don't like that. Um, 8 crit is also nice. I like the 8 crit. But of course, the Leper's already low crit numbers don't really benefit too much from having more crit. 
Quarantine. Quarantine, I would say, is his best camp skill, and the reason for that is that it it, it costs three, and it it causes the leper to take 20% of his HP as damage. So he, the leper loses 20% of his max HP, is what I believe this does, and all companions have a chance to either heal 20%, uh, I mean, uh, heal 20 of their stress or heal 15 of their stress. So the leper, as we've talked about Slemny before, um, heals so much by himself that I don't care if he hits himself. I would love it if he hit himself. And that, and in exchange for me, of course, getting uh, stress heals on all of my companions. This skill heals so much stress. At the very worst, it heals 15 across all your companions, which means it heals 45 stress for three points. That's very good. And at the very best, it heals 60 across your companions. That's also very good. I love this skill. This skill is, you should, you should, uh, as a leper, you should almost always consider clicking the skill, whether you need it or not. And if you do, click it, you'll be very happy. This is a very efficient skill, one of the most efficient stress healing skills in the game. And then, of course, you have to click Reflection because Leper would otherwise be pretty useless. Um, I guess you don't really have to click it in that you, you could just resolve yourself to never using Chop and instead use Intimidate instead. That's okay. I actually, I actually, I, I could see that. If you, had take, if you took off Chop entirely and only gave me three moves to run the Leper, and these are three moves I selected. I you could play almost the exact same way to me. Uh, that's it. Let me stop my ranting about his skills and let's switch over to his uh, trinkets. Okay, and these are lepers' trinkets. Uh, the uh, of mention of specific mention, uh, special mention is fortunate amulet. Actually, so we're gonna actually talk about his uncommon because it's actually very good. Uh, it's one of the better uncommons in the game to pick up for a class. Uh, what it does is it gives eight accuracy to leper plus 3 crit to Leper, and only gives the Leper plus 10% stress. Uh, I love accuracy on Leper. Give me that accuracy. And I love crit on the Leper. Because um, he needs he needs as much ability to do damage as possible when he hits as I can possibly manage on him. So, uh, and this plus 10% stress part doesn't really matter because he can Slemity all the stress he takes off. So, um, this is a very good trinket to pick up, especially mainly because it compares so favorably to the very rare trinket, Focus Ring. Focus Ring is a generalist trinket, anyone can run it, uh, that gives 10 accuracy, 5 crit, and subtracts 8 dodge as a penalty. Um, as an uncommon, that scales very favorably. Um, of course, the Focus Ring is going to be the better trinket to run in the late game with the Leper, but if you don't have Focus Rings, uh, you can run Fortunate Amulets in the late game and be totally fine with that. Move on to his rare. Immunity Mask, uh, it gives plus 40 stun, plus 30 blight and bleed resist, and subtracts 10% of the Leper's max HP. So, uh, as you remember from, like, a few minutes ago when I was talking about Withstand and Bloody Shroud, uh, I don't want, I don't really need extra dot resist on the leper and I would and that's because of his high uh, max HP and this does the exact opposite of that it gives you the resists and lowers his max HP this is such a bad trinket do not run this this is there's no reason all it does is give you stun resist more on top of that and stun res the leper already has one of the highest stun resists in the game there's no reason to buff it any further he already resists most of the stuns that are thrown in the game anyway don't run this the Leper's Very Rare Trinket, Berserk Mask, is one of the better class Very Rare Trinkets in the game. It gives Leper plus 8% crit, a very, very big crit bonus, one of the biggest in the game. It's tied, actually, for the largest crit bonus in the game at 8% with other uh, trinkets. It gives plus 3 speed, something the Leper really desires, uh, and minus 10% virtue chance and minus 33% healing received. Um, healing received doesn't really matter. The, the Leper heals so much with Solemnity that minus some healing is fine. Um, and he actually has so much action economy to cast Slemony that he's going to be healing repeatedly. You're going to lose a lot of value on Slemony, but you, you're, you'll find often you're topped off of the Leper anyway, so it's not a big a deal to decrease the healing out of Slemony. Um, and because you're casting Slemony so much, you're never really getting to the point where you're rolling for afflictions on Leper. Um, if you are, uh, you should be casting Slemony more. Um, uh, so this minus 10 virtue chance doesn't really matter. So uh, the downsides of this trinket don't really apply. So let's look at the upsides, right? 8% crit, huge. 3, three speed, huge. The Leper come, becomes from one of the slowest in the game to at least average again at 7 speed. And that's exciting because then he can start applying um, Intimidate or Purging people very consistently before they get their actions. So you can pseudo-stun that rank 1 character with Purge uh, before they can act for the turn. Or you can Intimidate um, the... Ar the Bone Arbalist, who deals a lot of damage, who's in rank 3 and 4, before it gets to deal damage. 
And that's amazing. This is a good trinket. Uh, mainly because of speed, but hey, speed and crit, I'll take that. So uh, what are the other trinkets I would consider running on Leper? Uh, really, he really, really just desires accuracy. Um, because when he is hitting something in position 1, uh, when, there's some when there's a good unit in position 1, I really love to hit it consistently. And so I would recommend, and I think this is pretty much a staple set, I recommend the Focus Ring plus Berserk Mask. Um, that is a very, very good set uh, of trinkets to run for him. Very simple. So let's switch over to his team comps. Okay, so let's try and reason out a good team comp for Leper. He doesn't really fit into a lot of team comps, and the main reason for that is that he's not a good damage dealer because he can't reach ranks 3 and 4. Uh, he doesn't offer any utility in, in terms of stuns. Um, and stuns are infinitely better, by the way, than Intimidate and Purge because they actually, instead of pseudo-stunning, instead of uh, kind of removing the action, instead of instead of making certain characters take weaker actions, they stuns can actually disable that character's ability to take an action on that turn. So these moves, despite despite all my hype of them, are, are just worse than stuns. It's like, strictly worse than stuns. So... He offers no stuns, he offers no damage, he doesn't offer stress healing, but he does offer healing to himself, which does mean that we can run off healers um, or weaker healers in the Vestal and still get away with it. So uh, let's try and build a team comp around him using that uh, as a basis. So when we can run, when we start to, when we talk about running weaker healers, we can instantly think occultist. Occultist is not very reliable, so it would be nice if the leper could take care of himself while the occultist takes care of the other people on the team. That's a good idea. Occultist is also a stunner, so we can put him into position two for that. And that's nice. We need, we would need, we would ideally like to have another stunner. And because the leper is so bad at hitting, at connecting with damage onto ranks three and four, we would like to have a very good stunner uh, for the back ranks. And that right away brings us to the bounty hunter as the next uh, person to add on the team and then uh, our last person to add on the team if we look at the comp right now it doesn't have anything to reach into rank four in terms of damage the best you can do to rank four with this team is intimidate plus the occultist um, weakening curse and you can flashbang them and bring them up but that's not really reliable so we need someone to reach into rank four and our fourth slot is open right now and so there's two options we can take we can either take the arbalist to make uh, the occultist plus arbalist um, healing synergy, or we can take the Houndmaster, who can reach into any of the ranks with Hound's Rush, and he also offers stress healing to the comp, and that's nice. Uh, but at the end of the day, um, the Leper offers nothing, so you're really running good stunners and and other people who are very decent. Um, just looking at this comp real quick, just ask yourself, why am I not running a Hellion in this position? The Hellion offers so much more than Leper, She's got, she's got the ability to hit any rank. She's got a stun for ranks 1 and 2. She has a self-heal as well if you want to run a general rush. And you'll just realize how bad the Leper is in this comp. Um, so let's try making another comp with the Leper. It's one that's different from here. Uh, from this one. Um, to see if we can try and get away from this Hellion problem. Uh, so what does the Leper... Well, let's, let's, let's try and cover up some of the Leper's weaknesses that we haven't covered up so far. So his ma uh, one of his weaknesses is accuracy. So let's see. Um, there are two accuracy buffers in the game, uh, the Jester and the Man-at-Arms. Uh, so let's let's actually build with the Man-at-Arms first. Let's take the Man-at-Arms. Uh, you don't want to put Man-at-Arms here because Man-at-Arms likes to spam Rampart. And when he uses Rampart, Leper is put into position 2 where he can no longer use Purge or Intimidate. So you're going to want to run a Man-at-Arms in position 3. And when he Ramparts forward, uh, it's the same problem. So you're going to want to run a dancer to offset the rampart from the man at arms. And the only dancer that you can really think of that is slower than the man at arms is the crusader. And then you are in this awkward position where you still need a healer because the crusader isn't going to do the healing all by himself. So you're going to put a vestal on the team. And the vestal being on this team creates the comp known as the wall. And this is a, let me just tell you, this is a noob trap. Do not run the wall. The reason it's a noob trap is because you're running three slow characters. These are the three slowest characters in the game and a Vestal. You're going to be taking massive stress damage because you can't quickly disas dis you can't quickly kill off the stress casters. Like you're 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 
speed is not fast enough to go before stress casters while they stress cast you. You're going to have a lot of problems with this comp where you're going to spend many turns recovering with the Crusader just using Inspiring Cry to try and de-stress. The Leper helps you with that, but this is just, just there's better comps to run. Um, so let's try using the Jester instead to see if we can avoid the, the trap of the wall. So the Jester. The Jester also doesn't have rank 4 reach, so we need to start thinking about rank 4 reach a little bit. And maybe the ability to actually deal damage, because Jester can't deal damage to rank four, uh, rank 3 that well either. Uh, slice off is okay, but it's not amazing. Um, and we also need a healer, so we need to put a healer in either positions 2 or 3. Um, obviously position 2 would be Occultist, position 3 would be the Vestal. So let's work with, let's work with the Occultist for now. Um, since we also have a stunner out of him, that's pretty good. Uh, we have a pretty consistent stunner. Um, and then we need a... We really, really are in dire, dire need of a uh, a good damage dealer for rank 4. And then we think about how Master and pray that he can kind of take up that role. Uh, this team is very weak still because it doesn't project that much damage into rank 4. Um, how Master is not the best damage dealer. Uh, he's far from that, actually. So this team crumbles a little bit in that kind of idea. Um, so let's let's try and back up and see if the Vesto gives us any better options. So let's put a Vesto here. So now we need a rank 2 damage dealer that can reach rank 4. Um, who can do that? So we can we can obviously put a shield breaker on the team, but that reaches the problem of you don't want to move in front of the leper because that disables his best skills. So we really have to think that I think the only person who does it is the Houndmaster again. Um, you can you can use a pistol shot oriented highwayman, but you're not using highwayman's best move of uh, repost, so it's not worth it. Um, so again, we're in this situation where we're using a Houndmaster as the main damage dealer, and that's not very exciting. Um, that's so sad. And where I, I think I'm just forced to conclude that the Leopard just doesn't have any amazing team comps. Uh, he just is such a hindrance on your team, and how it should be built is a little awkward. Uh, one more thing before I actually close, I forgot to say this entirely, but um, the Leopard is a is not a good solo character, as you can see when from our team building. He needs a lot of help, and um, he needs a lot of investment and a lot of buffs maybe from the Jester or the Man at Arms. Um, but you have to ask yourself, why am I putting so many buffs on a, on the Leopard when I could put so many buffs on better damage dealers, such as the Shield Breaker, such as the Hellion, such as the Grave Robber, such as like even Houndmaster, for example, such as even Crusader does better damage with Holy Lance. And so, like, if you put those buffs on those characters, they also perform extremely well. So yes, the Leopard performs extremely well. You're probably going to have a good amount of success with this team, but it's not because of the Leopard. It's because of, like, you have a Vestal on the team. The Vestal makes anything work, to be honest. Um... So really, the strength of the leper is being supported by other, su supported by your other team members. But being supported by all the other team members will make anybody very strong. What do I? So let's go on to the conclusion. What do I rank the leper? I rank the leper as D tier. Uh, he's actually currently on my list, the second to worst character after the antiquarian. So if not for the antiquarian being literally designed to be the worst, I would consider him actually to be the worst character. Uh, the reason for that is that um, he has no stuns. He's got, oh he's got a good stat spread. That 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 stat spread I have no complaint about except for speed and his movement. Um, uh, he's got he's got no reach into rank four. He's got no stun. He's no he's got no reach into rank three and four for dealing damage. Actually, he's got no stuns. He's got no heals. He's got no stress heals for the team. So he brings no utility to the team. So he better be doing a lot of damage to ranks 1 and 2. Um, and he does. He does a lot of damage to ranks 1 and 2. But we really don't want to be killing ranks 1 and 2. Because those are the things that we recover off of. Those are the things which we spend 2 or 3 extra turns stunning. And then using a Vestal to heal ourselves. Or using a Houndmaster to stress heal ourselves. Those are the things we do that off of. And we don't want to be killing those that fast. Um, uh, he does trivialize 2 fights uh, in the game. Between uh, the Swine God and the Prophet. But the Swine God is trivialized by a lot of things in the game, so we can't really count the Swine God. And he trivializes the Prophet, which is actually probably his best usage in this game. Trivializing the Prophet is pretty good. A lot of The Prophet's a little rough, and bringing the Leper is an easy way to get uh, those three pews. So, that makes him D-tier. 
He's got no other uses outside of those two that someone doesn't directly outclass him for, in my opinion. Alright, that's Leper Review. Thank you for watching.